it is the last day of 2023 and it will be so much better listening to dpr ian's limbo which i'm doing live right now in this moment because i haven't watched it i haven't listened to it and i'm super excited and i cannot contain it and so let's just dive right in before i just start fangirling and like giving you all of the background information let's just like look at it because it is, will be amazing uh absolutely no doubt about that let's just let's just go all right, this is how it starts. I was never insane except upon occasions when my heart was touched at Gallen Park, which makes sense with all of the crow symbolism. And it's dark. And like, this is the set of the previous video. Don't go insane. And the umbrella again. And the dancers. God, that, those effects. Those gloves. Damn. I wish I could have these nails. Okay, the red. Okay. Is he putting a belt around his neck? Oh, it does uh, transition into insanity with the bleeding heart. Pretending to be composed. It was like a spider web. Damn, instead of pitch pitchforks, we have umbrellas. And they make the rain, it's not like they protect them from the rain. And the eye color change, he still has two eyes. Ooh, the dance Under my umbrella, I love. <laughs> when I was filmed inside. Loving the inside and the rain symbolism with Mido being born inside as well. And then the dancey era of insanity. Damn. Tia. Oh. Who's he bleeding to? Who's he talking to? Oh, the bad and the dreams? That makes total sense. So I just connected that. Again, Chloe. Why at this point in the video? This is a club beat. Like, yeah, play him in the clubs. And I feel like this is a cool transition to Arte being released as a DPR feature. Honest. Like, it all just blends so much in that company. It's amazing. Is that a purple coat? Here, the raven symbolism. So it's not a car. Hope you see. Codependency! Oh, I love that. It's from the previous video. This is where it ties in, and it's just like loop de loop. All right, I talked through the video just now, and uh, I need to watch it again to see more, to see all of the symbolism, because it's just, like, so minute and so detailed and so tied in with all of the other videos and the whole videography of DPRE, which is absolutely amazing, absolutely insane. And I'm wondering where the hybrid was, though, because, like, that was teased on Instagram, and I still see Mr. Insanity with the makeup, but it's not that the sparkly makeup with the, the green and the pink. This one is just very Tim Burton-esque with just red. Like the red eyes, the red cross. It's not a star, it's a cross. And then the bleeding heart uh, detail thing. Is it just like putting on the jacket, taking it off? Like, is that the transition between the highs and the lows of the bipolar? But also because it's DID, so different personalities in the same body of Christian Yu because it's all based on his personal lived experiences and dreams. So is that the hybrid, the transition, the limbo state, hypomania, what do you want to call it? And that's the in-between person? Oh, let's just watch it again. Let's just watch it again. So red is Mido and blue is the limbo, I think, because green and then purple are Mr. Insanity. So it's blue, the hybrid. Side note, appreciate my outfit because I've got my own insanity, like inspired eyes, eyeballs, whatever, and nails, like purple for insanity and red for Mido, but it's like matching my outfit, so it's dark. 
just like, you know, all of the cuffs on the belt, you're like a collar. <laughs> and then he's putting it on also like a collar, like a wolf dog hybrid thing, visual. And they're all standing there in the back and moving while you just becomes neat like insanity but it's not so these are the ravens all the people all of the faces people in the dream like a white is matter Damn, I want to see that on the stage. And the butterflies are black. Is that a museum? The green and the red. Insanity. wondered about that visual when he just like looks up and he does that in the dances a lot you know and when he's like portraying Mido just like the smile and just closing eyes but also looking up like especially in the insanity uh dance that's going on TikTok <laughs> that don't go insane where uh he does the breathing stuff <laughs> but like what what is that is that again with the kind of Christian symbolism look up into the sky and then instead it becomes a godlike kind of figure who throws Mido out of the sky? So like what's up in the sky if there's no creator like insanity yet creating all of these lookalikes? What's he looking up to? Like you know? And I still don't quite in the lore, I still don't quite get how Mido is like a fallen angel, but then insanity kind of made him fall to earth but he's been there before as part of the protection of christian you like the ian character sometimes i'm getting a little bit confused <laughs> about the chronological order because also the videos are very much out of order like first we got mido and then we got kind of a prequel with uh the mido 2 movie which is both in the past and the present but then also there's insanity the new arc with the new album, which is set in the past where Mido already exists, but Insanity hasn't really gotten as powerful and blind in his, you know, cell <laughs> to protect and explore anything that he deems his. And yeah, it's a bit confusing. I feel like a breakdown needs to be like a, a timeline would be kind of nice. I feel like somebody must have done that. I kind of want to look that up, but not now. <laughs> but like, yeah, this visual, I need that to be explained to me. Like, what? But it's it's not like in awe. It's not reverend. It's just like a little bit challenging, curious, but like also being a little bit dissociated, you know? Just like looking into space, not anywhere particular. Like, at least that's how I dissociate sometimes. Oh, okay. <laughs> TMI. <laughs> I like the pajama party. And one thing I noticed is how he's just not engaging with the environment at all. He's just there and being depressed. <laughs> just completely oblivious to all of the madness around him. And it's like just black and then black and white, like devoid of all the colors, but it's not quite as black and white as with Mido. Also, while I was editing and actually listening to the lyrics, I obviously caught the Edgar Allan Poe references, not just for the quotes, but also for the raven symbolism and how he's just referencing that in the lyrics, uh, going down to the basement while the ravens take their turn, picking up what's left of me. So, you know, in the poem, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, that's just about loss and grief and what comes after and all of that. But also, I feel like going down to the basement kind of reminded me of the story, uh, the cask of... Amontillado where somebody buried a person alive in the walls 
and that haunted them like they heard the story like it felt like it was there all the time omnipresent and very much alive <laughs> i don't think necessarily that that's referenced but it kind of feels like this kind of feeling that there's other persons like did <laughs> reference in that as well like you know um so my uh, yeah literature nerd hard like that <laughs> Because I did study a British, American, and Canadian literature in university, if you didn't know. All of the characters are faceless, who kind of like robbers, like, you know, in the bank scene of the Mr. Green. But there's just partial humanity. Like, you can see some of the face, like the mouth. But here, they just, I feel even less uh, personal. Like, the Mr. Green character, where you can see nothing of a person, still has personality. Like, he's quirky he's fun he's like over the top and these are just still or fighting play fighting and he, this character is very just withdrawn and completely not there at all <laughs> except then you know being mad <laughs> just in this beginning scene like yeah because like Mido is really angry and insanity is like really manic and he's just like numb it's what I feel it's what I'm getting yeah, like, he doesn't react at all. He just stares, gives the Kubrick stare in slow-mo. Like, he's not active. Like, in all the other videos, there was action going on. There was, like, jumping and running and fighting and flying. He's just, like, on the floor, on the bed, trying to muster energy to get up. But you also can see his scars, which he got on tour. Like, I feel like the, the makeup made it more prominent on purpose. And this with the papers flying around, like in the beginning of the Dunker Insane video, Ian wrote this letter to Insanity to not go overboard and exploring all of these different doors and the subliminal, subconscious, dream world, other world space, because that would mean losing sanity, which becoming then the ultimate insanity in the embodied version of Mr. Insanity. And those letters were like an anchor to the last shred of sanity and he's just surrounded by it, destroying it all like all of his henchmen are just wrecking the place wrecking that kind of physical 3d realm including the anchor text where he's just like ripping it where he's just like no don't care about that <laughs> just destroying that way to get back into the sanity or into mido you know just this kind of in between where Ian turns to into insanity and that was the letter and like he has the letter because he's a, in between the transition thing and then it just shows insanity in the next frame in his purple suit so he's like turning from like black and white into this kind of greenish blue realm and then puts on the purple and then becomes insanity is that right? I don't know, but it's it's cool. I feel like I have to like watch it multiple times over and then watch it from back to back and then come up with like an explainer video because like for, for a while now I would like to make a whole series explaining all of the different aspects and the lore and the creation and the back to behind the scenes and the thoughts and the stuff. All of that is so fascinating. I feel like that could be a whole university lecture thing. <laughs> And I'm I'm a nerd. I love geeking out on all of these details, especially when it comes to uh, video direction and video editing and like creative storytelling. That's totally my jam. Like with photos and visuals and photo um, overlays with all of the special effects and stuff, uh, and then the overarching theme where like the visuals are then also embedded in the different videos, reappearing again and again. It is just so smart how everything is tied together. How everything just like teases a, li a little bit in future stuff and if you even look at lyrics from old videos from songs from even the first Mido album of TPREN you can see how so many things were like foreshadows foreshadowed with the red green and blue uh welcome to the other side we didn't even know what that was like it just sounded nice <laughs> and now it's just like it's been there all the time and he did such a really great life feed on station head radio where he went into all of the different colors and the different transitions and how all of that makes sense in his space and how he's visualizing that to like show people what it feels like to have his 
specific flavor of DID and bipolar and spreading awareness really just like you know it's it can be very healing I feel like he always says that giving it all a name and giving it so much prominent space and like really manifesting it into the world with its visuals and the video and the music and all of that makes it much more real and makes you much more powerful but I also think and again like I'm not in this place and I'm not a psychologist but I also feel like it gives also you back power to explain to yourself what it feels like what it is like and to show other people so they can understand you better like that's at least how I feel about when I got like my diagnoses like depression which was in turn a result of my undiagnosed ADHD which I now know and in retrospect so many more things make much more sense and now with having more labels I can express myself better. I have a reference. I have some validation of sorts that helps me stay sane and helps me feel in my own body and feel validated and feel based in my identity. Because so many times when people were like kind of almost gaslighting me into this is not a thing, like you shouldn't be feeling this, you shouldn't be expressing that, you should be less and you should be more, all of that stuff, like, you know, the conditioning and the social commentary especially you know neurospicy folks you will relate to all of the corrective comments uh of your self-expression uh what is socially accepted what you should and shouldn't do and how, how you should hide all of this masking i feel like in a different way this relates so much to all of the visuals and all of the vibes obviously that's different than having did i don't know what that's like but i just love how just sharing all of that helps so many people really be more self-reflective or also communicate to other people and then feel validated even in the fact that I'm not alone in this this is what happens to other people and that alone is already so valuable so nourishing and like it's it's just amazing and then you got the banger sounds you got the cool visuals you got the whole storytelling where you can like find the easter eggs like see how it ties together a little bit of like a, a mystery <laughs> you know there's like so much fun in it even if you're just like a casual viewer you're like yeah that's a dope video it's amazing <laughs> but i just love how overarchingly it just gives back so much it's not just like a personal project it's like way bigger than that so you think oh thank dpr so much for doing all of that and being so extra it's amazing it's so great <laughs> I just wish I could work with them someday like I still feel like they might need a photographer for the visuals because they're so crazy with the videos and all of the layers and the effects and the colors and the staging and the composition and all of that but then they rarely share the photos and then fans constantly grab the visuals from the videos and then they share them on all of the platforms but you know they don't really get anything new unless there's like an interview with a magazine and then they do a shoot but it would be so cool to capture that world in visual as well and uh, that's totally my gem <laughs> that's what I do I go crazy in photos and I don't even know what's gonna happen I just let it take over whatever it is I don't know the flow the inspiration and creativity whatever I'm just like hit me and then I go for the photoshop <laughs> oh my god that would be so cool here's an example for a fan uh gifting and I'm really proud of how it turned out it's so cool it's so cool so yeah that's what I do <laughs> And also, while I'm at it, because I, well, DPR always say they always watch the React videos, so, like, I'm uh, a bit scared. (laughs) But uh, if there's a possibility to ever do an interview, I would love to do that, because my podcast is really just about having conversations with people, and then just seeing where that goes. I'm more of an intuitive person. I really just love hearing people's lived experiences in life, and I have so many questions anyway, because I'm such a big, big fan But also, uh, in my travel plans for 2024, I really want to travel much more and I'm going to visit friends in San Francisco and LA. And so if there's any chance to do an on-site video interview and I'm thinking even like, how cool would it be if it was like a a vlog and going on like a hike, but like it's an interview at the same time, like, you know, going back into the travel vlogging kind of thing and having other, like, I love adventures, like just like exploring the backyard and... There's so much more to LA than like the Hollywood Walk of Fame and Malibu and, you know, there's like so many beautiful mountains. You don't have to travel far and that's what I always do. Like I will be 
doing that anyway like hiking and going on adventure and see whatever happens i don't know it's always fun it's always weird but that would be cool a different type of interview just going on a hike and asking questions and just like talking you know like a, a travel vlog like you know with other travel bloggers you take them on a trip and then you just share the shenanigans like that would be cool anyway so that was that that was the reaction video i need to process that now i'm gonna watch it a gazillion times more i'm gonna download it right now on spotify to listen to it a gazillion times more and i yeah i might do more videos explaining all of the lore and the stuff because most people who watch this and who haven't watched any of the dpr videos again what are you doing watch them first should uh be confused if they don't know all of the in-depth information <laughs> Like, like I get a little bit um, into a rabbit hole with that. It's my hyper fixation. ADHD people, you know what I mean. And yeah, that would be interesting. It would be great, maybe, for next year. And I kind of feel like I want to do that with other people, with other fans. Like, they have so many cool theories online. There's so many accounts with symbolism. And I'm just, like, in awe of all of these cyber detectives. I could never. And also don't want to, like, credit I want to credit them, like, you know, they do great stuff. Internet sleuths, you go, it's great. And yeah, that's it. I wish everybody a fabulous start of the new year. I know some countries already have the new year, but like, I wish you a great new year. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, whatever. You slay and we'll see each other in the new year. And hopefully with a lot of new adventure shenanigans. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> All right, until then, bye-bye.